In this video, we're going to be looking at examples of integrating um, products and powers of trig, trig functions, specifically starting with um, products of sines and cosines. So notice on the, um, the notes, I have um, some guidelines for um, integrating products of powers of sines and cosines, of tangents and secants, um, for individual powers of tangents and secants, and individual powers of sines and cosines. Um, so this is going to sort of describe our process as we go through different examples, um, but these um, guidelines will make more sense in the context of some examples. So they're there for you to describe what we're doing, but let's start getting into some examples. Um, notice that I do um, have a note that I've just added on here that although we have the description of several different types here, um, if you encounter something that's involving some trig functions but not specifically one of those listed combinations, um, it's going to be useful to, to convert to sines and cosines. So let's start looking at some examples dealing with integrating powers of um, sines, cosines, and products of sines and cosines. So notice in this first example, I've got an integral of an odd power of sine. So when I'm looking at um, an integral of some um, products of trig functions, I want to pay attention to whether the power that I have is odd or even. So notice that it's odd in this example. Um, we're going to see as we go through the, the techniques in a lot of these problems that our main techniques that we'll be using will be u substitution and some trig identities. Okay, so we'll see kind of a pattern about how we go about um, using u sub and which trig identity specifically will be helpful. So the situation here is I've got an odd power of sine. So what's going to be helpful in this case is to pull off a power of sine. Okay, so let's look at what that gives us and what I mean by pull off. So I want to rewrite this as an integral of sine to the fourth x times sine x dx. Okay, um, when I'm pulling off this sine, I'm sort of thinking about saving this to be related to my u substitution where I'm going to want sine x dx to be like the derivative of what I'm going to use for my u up to maybe a constant difference. So I'm left with this even power of sine. Okay, so remember that we know that um, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So I can write down that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so when we have this um, odd power of sine involved, we're going to want to use the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so when I've got an odd power of sine, pull off the power of sine and use a Pythagorean identity so that I can write this in terms of some cosines so that then I'll be able to let u be equal to cosine x so my du can be something like negative sine dx. So let's see what this looks like. So sine to the fourth x, well that's really sine squared squared. So I'm going to write this as 1 minus cosine squared x squared times sine x dx. Okay, so a big idea in a lot of these problems is to break things apart and use identities to make it a nice setup for using u substitution. So remember we mentioned that u substitution would be a technique that would come up within these new strategies that we're going to be learning and this is a big place where we'll see a lot of u substitution. So I'm going to let um, u be equal to cosine x here. Okay, so I'm just kind of summarizing our steps. We pulled off that sign, used the Pythagorean identity, and then we're going to use u substitution. So I'm letting u be cosine, so my du can be negative sine x dx, or du, excuse me, negative du now will be sine x dx. Okay, so what does that give me? Well, I'm going to have now an integral of 1 minus u squared squared, and sine x dx is going to become negative du. So I've been managed to turn this problem of a power of sine into this nice integral that's going to be uh, an integral of a polynomial. So before I can, can integrate that out, I have to use the, the technique of doing some algebra. So I need to expand, do 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. So that should be 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth 
du. And now I can nicely use my antiderivative power rule on each one of those um, terms. So I'm going to have negative, oops, I'm not going to have an integral anymore. I'll have u minus 2u cubed over 3 plus u to the fifth over 5 plus c. Okay, and now we know that for our final um, step, I need to put this back in terms of x because I was trying to solve for, or trying to evaluate sine to the fifth x dx. So this is going to become negative cosine x minus two thirds cosine cubed x plus cosine to the fifth x um, over five plus c. Okay, so we see that this is what we get for our final answer. So that's going to be the technique that we'll follow for either an odd power of sine or an odd power of cosine by itself. With an odd power of sine, we pull off a um, excuse me, pull off a sine, write the rest in terms of cosines, and do a u substitution. If it had been an odd power of cosine, I'd pull off a cosine and write the remaining cosines in terms of sine. So let's look at another example where what I do have is an odd power of cosine but I don't have it by itself. I have it with some other powers of sine. As long as I have at least one odd power of sine or cosine, okay, we're going to be pulling off whoops, a sine or cosine, depending on what we have, and writing the rest, rewriting the rest using the Pythagorean identity. So and write other part in terms of cosine or sine using the Pythagorean identity. Okay. So we can see how that's that's working in, in the context of these examples now. So let's go through this next example. So I've got the integral of cosine to the fifth x over sine to the 3 halves x. I do have an odd power of cosine. So I'm going to use my technique for dealing with a situation where I have at least one odd power. If I had two odd powers, I'd have a choice about which one I wanted to pull off, whether I wanted to pull off a sine or a cosine. But here I've got this fractional power on sine, so cosine is the only one where I have an odd power. So we're going to rewrite this as cosine to the fourth x, cosine x dx, all over sine to the three halves x. Okay. So notice that we've pulled off this cosine. This is going to become part of my du. So I'm going to want my u then to be sine x. So I want to write this in terms of sines. Okay, well that means I'm going to be using my Pythagorean identity. So I know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, which means cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Okay, so that gives us an integral then. Remember cosine to the fourth would be cosine squared squared. So I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared squared will give me back cosine to the fourth times cosine x dx all over sine to the 3 halves x. So we see how we're using a similar technique to above. I introduced an identity um, and pulled off certain pieces to make it nicely set up for using u substitution. So because I pulled off a cosine here and not a sine, my u will now be sine x instead of cosine x like it was in the previous example. So we'll do u equals sine x so my du can be cosine x dx. Okay, so I can rewrite my integral then as 1 minus u squared squared. The cosine x dx part becomes du, and then this is all over u to the 3 halves. Okay, so like in the previous example, I've been able to take this kind of messy looking integral of some trig functions and turn it into an integral of some nice um, powers of u. Um, an integral here of 1 um, minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth when I distribute 1 minus u squared times 1 minus u squared. This is all over u to the 3 halves. 
So now we need to divide each term by u to the 3 halves. So I have 1 over u to the 3 halves is u to the negative 3 halves minus 2 u to the 2 minus 3 halves, so that'll be 1 half, plus u to the 4 minus 3 halves, so that will be u to the 5 halves. Okay, and then we're ready to take the antiderivative of each one of those terms. Okay, so this will be u to the negative 3 halves plus 1, so to the negative 1 half divided by negative 1 half, or negative 2, minus 2 u to the 1 half plus 1, so we have 3 halves divided by 3 halves, or times 2 thirds, plus u to the, let's see, that'll be 7 halves divided by 7 halves, or times 2 sevenths, plus c. Okay, and so for the final part, I'm just going to rewrite what it is that we were trying to integrate here, the integral of cosine to the fifth x all over sine to the 3 halves x dx will be negative 2. Now this is u to the negative 1 half. I could replace my u with my, my sine x and write it sine x to the negative ha 1 half, or I could decide to write that with the, um, the sine x in the denominator and have negative 2 over the, the positive square root there of, of sine x. Then I'm going to have minus 4 thirds sine x to the 3 halves plus 2 sevenths sine x to the 7 halves plus c. Okay, and so this is what we have here for our final answer. Okay, just some notational things to point out. Notice that when we're doing our um, integrals here, we are using equal signs at every step so that we are connecting our um, the question that we're being asked all the way to our final answer. We're keeping our dx notation in there, or our du's, um, both within the, the integrals themselves and when I do my, my u substitution. You know, I have du is cosine x times dx. Um, missing equal signs or missing dx's or du's can lose you a small number of, of notation points. So you want to make sure you're using um, good careful notation in your work. Continue uh, watching these video lectures to see some more examples um, integrating different products of powers of trig functions.